Hello everyone, it's Melanie. I wanted to say hello to all my new subscribers and thank you for joining. And I wanted to take a minute to say thank you for all the sweet, kind, thoughtful comments um, that you guys have been leaving on my videos. Um, I'm a little behind on replying to all the comments, but they are very heartwarming and I really, really appreciate um, you taking the time to leave such kind words for me. Um, and I will get caught up on my comments very soon, I promise. So before I get to what I wanna show you for today, I thought I would also show you, um, these are the little folios that I made in the last few videos, and I made a couple more. So I wanted to show those to you um, just in case you were interested. This one I made out of a children's book. Um, the book was called um, One Two, That's My Shoe. And it was about a, a dog that steals a shoe. It's really cute. It's a, it was a scholastic um, book. So here's the book cover. And what I did on this one, I collaged the outside, but I left. This is the actual book cover, and this is the book cover. So I collaged the outside and collaged the inside with, um, you know, scraps of paper. Here's the dog. Oh, no, here's the dog, he's in here. The dog that steals the shoe. There he is, I left him in there. So what I did on this one that was a little different from the other ones, excuse me, is um, I put the corner pockets in, but this time I, I curved them and I just freehand cut them. So I cut basically, um, I cut a rectangle to fit where I wanted it and then I just freehand cut uh, the pockets out. So I made curved pockets for this one. And I was kind of thinking as I was sitting here, um, well, I could take this in my, put this in my bag or something, or my purse really, um, and put stuff in it, like paper to write on and things like that. So I glued on some extra little pockets. There's some extra, extra little pockets there. And then I put some paper in it. Um, which I could use to journal on or write notes on while I'm out and about. And then I'd have it um, to add to my journal when I come home. And then I thought, oh, I could use it to keep up with receipts that I want to keep up with. I don't necessarily need that one. but um, And then I even put my Joanne coupons in there. Um, so since I was thinking I would put this in my purse, I also, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm trying to get a glare there. Um, I coated it just the outside, the front cover and the back cover, not these, not these flaps, but I coated this with a layer of matte medium to um, kind of seal everything since I thought I would put it in my bag and I didn't want it to get messed up. So um, this one, oh, this one I also glued a piece of fabric onto the spine. So there's that one. And then because I was thinking about adding these, uh, putting something like this in my purse. In this one, I actually added a little card holder. So it's just a piece of paper. I don't know how long. Um, it's a piece of scrapbook cardstock. I don't know how long it would last, but um, I just put some little card slots in there. Like if, you know, you wanted to carry one of your cards or whatnot. And then this one has the same, same number of pockets. Um, Inside, I did on this one, I put a vertical tuck spot on this one. And for the outside of this one, I used a piece of the paper that I um, use as backing when I do painted paper with a gift card. So um, I just used a piece of the backer paper and then I just did a, col a little collage with some tape and stuff on the front. And I have not done any matte medium or anything over this one. Um, but I will if I think I'm going to use it like to take around and put in my purse and things like that. So those are the two of those that I made um, the other day after working on those others. So the thing I made yesterday I want to share with you is this book, which I'm not in love with the cover, but I am in love with the book structure, the book itself. Um, and I'll give you just, a, there's a kind of a preview of what it was, but I like to show you my thought process. I like to show you how I arrived here because I don't, I think that's helpful sometimes for people to know, you know, what was the thought process behind this project? So 
on, let's see, day before yesterday, I started, it all started with, oh, I'm going to take some of the books that were sitting on the floor because I was trying to clean things up off the floor. So I decided I was going to take books off the floor and put them on a bookshelf. Well, that turned into an all day, all day room, studio, organizing, cleaning kind of thing. And as I was going through stuff in my room here, I have a lot of baskets like this. And I was just kind of looking through some of them. And as I'm going through them, I'm just thinking, oh my goodness, what is all this junk, all this stuff? And it's, I know that you don't have things like this, right? I'm the only one that has junk like this sitting around. Anyway, I mean, it's literally, okay, there's a label off some markers, some things I tore out of a book, a piece of a napkin, which needs to go in the napkin drawer. I can fix that right now. Um, book pages, there's some labels. This is when I was sewing, this is super thin sheets of wood. And I was making, this was a few years ago, um, I was making books with wood covers. So there's different pieces of slabs of real wood. Um, there's just all kinds of stuff in here. But what I wanted to get to was this kind of stuff. So there's one random piece of paper. And then here's some... Three, three pieces, two pieces of um, grid paper. Here's another thing I, where I was trying to sew through wood, but it's got a whole bunch of cardstock inside it. This is a folder, I think, from my traveler's notebook. And then I get down even further in this, I mean, there's a, there's an, a calendar and this basket can't be that old because I think I bought that calendar at the beginning of 2018. There's stationery. There's a book I made out of a craft paper bag, a single piece of paper. And then like that, what is this? One piece of paper out of all these different books. This is like notes that I wrote patterns on and stuff. This looks like um, book text. There's another page. Oh, that goes in my poetry, that poetry book that I'm trying to put back together. So this is so, it's so random. And I think I know what happens. I think what happens is I need to clean up. Let's say I'm going to clean up, you know. So I just take everything that's on the desk or whatever and put it in a pile and then it ends up in baskets like this. Um, and then they just sit and age. And so I have a bunch of pages like this. So what I'm I guess what I'm trying to say is there's all this, you know, all this kind of paper that just piles up. So that's one basket. I mean, and then it goes on and on. I got picked up this newspaper at at a an Asian market that I went to. This is just pages of s copies and um, printouts. Here's just two p two random pieces of notebook paper. Old pieces of a calendar. I mean, it just there's so much of this. This is full of receipts and tickets and things like that. And then there's more of, <laughs> here's one single note card. There's a couple of Madeline books, a whole stack of card stock. Here's some composition. Oh, I was gonna say it's blank, but it's not. I guess I doodled, I doodled on it. Here's, this is blank though. Blank composition book paper. There's file folders. Cats I drew for a quilt I designed. A piece of pack 
backing paper, book pages, junk mail, sandwich shop bags, cover, I mean, two random pieces, three random pieces of deli paper, books. So what I'm thinking as I go through this, I also, I found this. So this is a piece, a page, this is a folio page from a book that I made. Well, for, I made it for a book that I made a long time ago, but apparently this page didn't make it in. So what I did on this book, it's a really pretty um, book with a pale green cover and um, it has all the paper that's in it, it is sewn onto other pages like this. This is a, an index page out of an atlas. So I sewed um, other pieces of pe scrap paper onto all of the pages of the book. Well, I can't find the book. I can't find the book anywhere. And I have looked and looked and looked. But this gave me an idea. So I was thinking about all these scraps of paper and what if I took all the scraps of paper and sewed them onto book pages over the existing text um, as a way to just use up scraps. So what's going on here is this is a book, an, an old architecture book from the 70s. This is what the pages originally looked like. And most of them, this space at the top of every page is, is blank. And then I did include a couple of pages from another book that I had that was the same size, that was a needlepoint book. So there's a couple of pages from this book in there also. So I just took um, the number of pages. This is the pages that originally came out of this book and the book cover. And I just started sewing things from my scraps um, that were blank, you know, blank, that kind of read as blank, um, and covering the text in the book. So it kind of reminds me, you know, it's, it's like this concept. This book that I made, it, it was a coffee table book, and actually it sat on my coffee table for two or three years. Um, and it, it's not anything you would ever write in. It's just kind of, you know, um, an altered book that people would pick up and look at and things like that. And it felt really good. The pages felt really cool because there was so much sewing on them. So this one I thought I could use same sort of way, but I thought if I just put, make sure that each page has some blank space on it, then this could be any kind of little journal. I mean, it could be, you know, a quote journal, a poetry journal, a scripture journal, a prayer journal, anything like that where you don't necessarily need, you know, a whole page to write on. And so you could write here, you know, you can write here and here. You can write on both of these, you know. And I personally love all the stitching all over it. it. Instead of using glue to glue these pages down, which would make them very stiff, the, uh, the act of sewing all of this, you know, I guess it's because maybe you're making hundreds of holes in the paper, so it makes the paper softer. And it just, the feel of it, it almost, with the thread and the, it, it almost gives it a feel, a, a textile-y kind of feel, which I love because that's my background is textiles. And um, so this one I just went through, and this one was a lot of trial and error. As you can see, I had a lot of trouble with um, stitching the pages down correctly or getting them to lie flat, and then I switched to my better sewing machine in the other room, so then I made this huge paper mess in my sewing room. Um, but I really, I really like this journal. I'm really liking it. So I started on another one. Oh, and then the cover. The cover had um, the title of the book and everything. This is a real cloth cover. And then the title of the book and everything was embossed in silver. And it, it's really big on the cover here about the architectural manual. And then it says some stuff down here, but it's all embossed on the cover. So I was going to cover that up with just a piece of fabric and I did it after I bound the book um, and the first piece of fabric I put on I didn't like um, 
So I put it on with Fabri-Tac and when they say, when Fabri-Tac says permanent, they mean permanent because it was really hard to get that other um, fabric off. And then I just grabbed this. It's, this is some 1990s um, chintzy looking print, you know, um, with a piece of uh, a quilt top that I, a piece of quilt square that I got from a quilt top from the flea market. So what I like about this book is that the spine is kind of, is flexible. See, let me see, see that? The spine is soft and flexible. I reinforce the spine. And then the pages are so soft and yummy. Okay, so now I'm 15 minutes into this video. Um, here's the next book I started on that I can show you. Oh, let me show you real quick. So these are some other books that I have in my stash that I think would make good, they're good candidates for this type of, um, for this type of book. This one is, um, Gas Tables, and it's actually, this is a paper cover, but it looks like fabric. So I would use, you know, folios out of this book to sew, I may have taken most of them out, I don't have a lot of pages left, but use the pages from this book to sew things onto and then stitch them back into the cover. Um, so I think that book would be a good candidate. I have this one, uh, Grand Masters of French Cuisine. And this actually is a cloth cover, which I love. And the pages are very heavy in this book, very, very thick. Um, so I think this one would make another good candidate for a patchwork scrapbook like this. And then this one I have is... Um, the wine book, and it's a, a paper cover, but I think it would, you know, it would still work out well. So this one's partially dismantled, but it has, um, it also has paper that I think would be good for this type of project. So those are some candidates for other books that I might use. The one I picked to do to start on another project is this Home and Garden Romantic Rooms. And this is one of those books that after I started looking through the pages to pick some pages to use, I'm like, why did I tear this book up? This book is beautiful. But this is kind of what the pages in this book look like. Um, there are a lot of these full page photos like this. That's the full page. And then there's pages like this that have text and photos. And there's, each of the chapters has... Um, a big title with some white space around it. But for the most part, these pages are are pretty pretty much covered. So I, on the first book, I did four signatures of three three pieces of paper each, three folios each. So that's twelve. So that's forty eight pages. Um, and I decided to do the same thing in this one. To do, I'm going to do four signatures of three three sheets each. Of paper and so I just started sewing where am I? okay so I started sewing things scraps of paper together like this so I'm just making stitching scraps of paper and these are literally just scraps from my scrap bins and some of those boxes and things that I found um, this is a piece of scrapbook paper that I would never use this is a cover, I think the dust jacket off of a book I got from the Dollar Tree. And I know how it is with saving these kinds of things. This um, paper here is a cut off, I guess I trimmed paper for something, but I have a huge, I have a huge stack of these. So I stitched those together with some braille. And here's another page. I just, I wouldn't use this scrapbook paper, but it was in my bag, my scraps. So what I thought was turn it over so that gives me the white space and then to kind of dress it up I put this on the side. And it doesn't necessarily have to cover the whole page. Um, so in some of them I kind of strategically like on this one I only covered up the text and just left this portion. And then here you know you can see kind of the picture around the outside this, the carpet was sort of light colored there, so I left that exposed. Um, so I thought I'd show you really quick 
what I did, I went through and just stitched a bunch of these things together at the machine. And then I'm going through and stitching these pieces that I made onto pages throughout the book. Um, and I didn't really, I didn't measure these as I was making them at the machine. So once I get them in here, some of them I'm like, oh, that's too big or that's too small or, you know, and then if that's the case, I just sew something else on or cut something off. So let me show you because I did have, I've been having a lot of trouble with getting it to lie flat. You know, if you glue this, this piece of paper right in the middle and then try to sew around the edge, it's gonna get really crooked. Um, I tried gluing all four corners. I tried taping everything down. I've tried everything. The only thing that I can get to work is, I wanna use that in a different place. The only thing I can get to actually work is doing a small line of glue, just, and I don't wanna sew through the glue, so I just kinda of pick how I wanna put this on here. I'm gonna go in like an inch or so and just put a light line of glue on all four sides. And I don't want a lot of glue in here because I don't want it to stiffen the pages. But once I put that there, I'm gonna put my page where I want it. And I'm not gonna sew through that glue, hopefully, because I put it in, you know, about half an inch or an inch. So then I'll take this to the machine, stitch all the way around it, and it will end up stitching um, on this one, you can see. So this, this is the stitching where I stitched this to this page, but this blue is the bobbin from when I stitched this on. And it doesn't bother me at all. I think it looks cool. So I'm gonna stitch this one on really quick. So here's this one. So now this one's finished. This, this folio is finished. This one's finished. And then I just need to do, I need to finish this one. And I thought this came from a Reader's Digest. So I thought this would actually make a really good first page inside my journal because I could put my name or whatever right here. So I'm gonna put that on this page. And to hold it down for sewing, I'm just gonna put a little line of glue, a light on all four sides, just in like an inch or so. And I'm gonna put that on. And then you could actually put both sides on if you wanted to. That one's really not big enough. So I could just grab some scraps and stitch. Here I tore these stitch some more onto it to make it a little actually do it that way so I'll just stitch oh, it's still too thick I don't want too much overlap because if if I'm gonna write on this piece of paper I don't want it too bumpy underneath I think I'll stitch this together right there. So there's that one. And then I can stitch across the top. This across the top. So I'll just stitch right there across the top of this one. And I haven't been back stitching on these. Um, I've just been um, sewing off the edge of the page and leaving some of the uh, thread tails, just not too, ooh. That is not a little bit of glue. That is a lot of glue. <laughs> I think my machine would be like, what? Especially this little cheap machine. And seriously, this is the only way that I have found that I can keep these pages from shifting. You know, with fabric, you can pin it keep it from shifting and so actually this page I could probably just go with that one stitching because I stitched and it actually caught both sides all the way around so here's the last 
the last page I need to stitch something onto. And I thought, oh, here's one. And I could just, I mean, I, I, I kind of, I like this whole, the shape of this sort of, you know, it's unusual, it's whatever. So I'm gonna make sure I put some glue on all four sides. But it, it, thinking about using the scraps of paper that I keep and turning them over and just using the backs of them as blank space, that's something I really kind of hadn't thought of before because I have a lot of, I have a lot of paper that's old. Or things that I just, I keep because I don't want to throw them away. Okay, so that's, that's everything I need for this, to do the, the text block, you know, the inside signatures for this particular page. So I think I want this to be my first page when you open up the book. And then I'm just gonna, I don't really like how that's right there and then this page is right here. So I think I'll swap out swap something out there so those two pages aren't next to each other. We'll put... So yeah, I like that better. This is a bunch of strips that I cut off the end of some wallpaper samples. Same thing with this. This is strips that were in my scrap bin, part of an envelope that was in the scraps. This is part of a Target. This paper's really old, so it kind of crumbles, but I liked being able to use it flat. It was, it seemed like it was gonna hold. It would be okay. Okay, there's another good one. One. And this page is the inside of, you know, the one of the first pages, and it's already blank except for that, so I just left it. Oh, this. I stitched, I had to stitch another piece of paper um, down the center of this one. And when I did that, I, I did it on my little machine and it tore this page up. So I just tear, tore off this little piece of an envelope and I'm just gonna stitch that over that tear. Here we go. So I'll just stitch that over the tear to kind of reinforce that page so it doesn't tear any further. And the last one. I love the way these feel. They're so um, floppy and flexible, and I think they'd even just get better with time. So there's the inside of my book. And that's what it will be like when I put the pages back in. And on this one, I'm only gonna put fabric. I'm gonna bind it first, and then I'm only gonna put fabric on the spine. And I think since I'm already at 30 minutes plus, um, I think I'm gonna do that in the next video. I will actually bind these pages, and I'll show you what I do to reinforce the inside of this cover, and how I stitch it on, and then just I'm just gonna glue a piece of fabric onto the outside of it. So that's what I've got today, guys. I um, I hope that's inspiring. If you kind of look at your scraps, you know, you look through your scrap bin and you kind of think, you know, oh, I have this paper that I saved and I don't like this side of it, but what about the, the other side? And you could do this with any, you know, book text, just stitch pieces of scraps together like that and then put them on um, book text. And you know, the other thing I was thinking when I was doing this is I thought, I mean, this is a very 
junk journaler kind of thing because if I just needed a, pa a notebook with blank paper in it, all I have to do is go to the Dollar Tree or you know the dollar store and buy a spiral notebook full of paper. This is this is such a junk journaler thing because it's so absolutely unnecessary to have to tear up an old book and put so blank pieces of paper over the text so that you can use the book. But that's what makes it a junk journaler thing. You know, it's I don't know, it's it's unnecessary and at the same time it's just beautiful, you know. Oh, I love this. Okay, so this page um I just sewed a piece of deli paper on top of it that you could write on because I liked underneath the page. It says handheld calculators permit complex computations with user written or prepackaged programs. And there was another page of this page it has the this flow chart on it. So I just sewed a piece of onion skin paper over it so you could write on top of write on top of that. And this this I was thinking um, it's not solid, it's not blank, but it's light colored. Um, and then like this is the cover page um, inside a book I bought at the Dollar Tree, the title page I mean, and then I just put this down the side to cover the rest of the text. Um, actually I think it's a big orange chart underneath there. And then in this book also I kind of strategically left some things exposed, like here. I put this in, but I left part of this chart down at the bottom that I liked. Um, here I left some of the orange going down the sides. There were quite a few places where it had a date, you know, like here's November 1974, and I liked that. So I just left that. This is not necessarily blank, but um, I left some of the original page exposed there and here. I liked all the charts and whatnot. So, um, and there too, down at the bottom. And this I thought was a good beginning page. This is actually from the needlework book, not from the architecture book, but I liked this chapter one, you know, when you, when you first open up the book. So maybe it'll give you guys another way to look at your scraps. Um, and I'm going to keep working on this one, and then I'm probably going to do another one after that. And then I thought, you know, I could do the whole, this whole thing again, altered book style. But so fabric scraps onto paper pages out, you know, and then rebind the book um, a different way. And it wouldn't be something that you would write in, but it would be a fun way to just... Um, display some fabrics and some little fabric collages and things like that. So I'm going to keep playing with this. Um, in the next video, I'll, um, I'll bind this one and show you how I reinforce the spine and take care of the cover. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!